All right, so the goals for today, um, we've got, do we have 45 of these? Yep. We've got 45 of these. Um, we need to take the data on each of the plots. Essentially, we just need to know the fate of every seed that's in there. I grew up in the Midwest, so I hadn't, I didn't really know much about the chestnut story, but when I came to Purdue University in Indiana, um, there was a lab working on chestnut restoration. And I thought, what do you mean restoration? And that's where I heard the story that the blight had come through in, the, in 1904 and pretty much devastated chestnut populations. This lab that I joined was interested in asking questions ecologically about what might happen if we bring chestnut back. Can we even get it back? Or are there what we started calling sort of ecological barriers? These we've got red oak, white oak, and American chestnut. And half of the seeds were buried and half of the seeds were left just on the surface. So the buried seeds we um, were doing, basically sim simulating what a squirrel would do. So it's an artificial cache. This is actually the second one here. So if you dig down in with your fingers, you can find the seed and it's right here. And it's a, it's a red oak. So one of the questions is just, well, how long, if we, if we plant seedlings out there, how long will it take for the population to grow and be sustainable? One component of that piece is um, what animals like squirrels and chipmunks will do with the seeds. So that's the question that my student Adam was looking at. And um, he, wanted to, he wanted to know from the seeds perspective, what is that benefit of being buried by a squirrel or by a chipmunk, so being cached. Zero. Merge. I want eight or seven. Eight. Eight. It should be fair. White didn't make chestnut extinct. It's not a federally endangered plant or anything like that. There's still millions of chestnut stems out in the woods. Um, but they're all tiny little sprouts. They're not this large canopy tree anymore. And so we call it functionally extinct because it was a species that was a major component of the canopy, got the blight, and now it sprouts and re-sprouts, so it's like this asexually reproducing shrub that's just in the understory. And then three should be on the surface, and it is... I call that nothing. There's an emotional attachment that people have to this tree that, you know, as a plant ecologist and someone who studies plants is fun to see for me because people don't often get so excited about plants. You know, you get, people get excited about bald eagles and wolves and, and these, these big charismatic species, but I actually have people come up to me and they want to show me their chestnut tattoos and, you know, all this crazy things. People, people do love this tree and you, you go to, to meetings of the American Chestnut Foundation and people are just really passionate about it. I know, that's the chestnut we're looking for. Is this it? What's neat is this seed here will stay attached mm. for quite a while. So it's actually taking nutrients from that seed in order to grow before it can photosynthesize on its own.